Throughout the centuries, there have been many different countries that used execution to punish serious offenders. Some of the final public executions occurred in the 20th century, and in America the final one of these executions occurred in August 1936. Today, America executes condemned criminals inside of private cells in prisons, but it was not always like that, as crowds would flock to come and witness an execution. But what is the story of the final public execution in America? And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Rainey Beffier was a criminal who had the record in the history books for being the final person publicly hanged in America. He was a young man who was of African-American descent, and he suffered heavily in his early years after he became an orphan, and then he began around the age of 26 to have run-ins with the law. He was charged with breach of the peace in 1935, and then was also caught stealing a couple of purses from a beauty shop. He was convicted of grand larceny and was sentenced to one year in the Kentucky State Penitentiary. He was a slight man of 5 feet 5 inches tall, and when he was released he continued to work as a manual labourer, where he earned a rather poor wage of around $7 a week. He was then arrested again, and was fined heavily, but he could not afford this, and he was then imprisoned in jail because of it. But his encounters with the law and the police would culminate in the crime that sent him to the gallows. In the early hours of June the 7th, 1936, Befeyer went to the home of Ishia Edwards. He accessed her house by climbing on a roof and then he jumped through onto the roof of the servants' quarters of another house and walked down a wooden walkway. He climbed over the kitchen roof to Edwards' window. After removing part of the window, he entered the room and woke her up, and then he began to choke and assault her. Rainy Beffier left Ishia Edwards, a 70-year-old woman, unconscious, he then ransacked her home and stole her valuables and jewellery. He then left the bedroom and hid his stolen jewels in a nearby barn, but the following morning, a neighbouring family knocked on Ishia Edwards' home, as they were worried she was ill. They could not get in the door, but they eventually entered the home and they found the 70-year-old lady dead. A doctor was summoned, and he said he could do nothing to save her. However, Rainy Beffier had left his prison ring there, and the police suspected he was behind the crime. He had been spotted wearing his ring, and fingerprints could now be used to see if he had been involved in the crime. Beffia hid out for four days, but then a worker in the nearby Ohio River saw him lying under some bushes, and he was then reported to the police. But he then moved again, and he was found on a riverbank after trying to board a barge. He was arrested and was then brought to trial. Beffia admitted his involvement in the murder and assault, and he said leaving his prison ring was a mistake. He confessed a second time, and he told prison officials where he had left the jewellery, and quickly a trial took place in Owensboro a few weeks after the crime occurred. On the night of the trial, Bafia told his lawyers he wanted to plead guilty, but the death penalty had been requested, and the prosecutor said, This is one of the most dastardly, beastly, cowardly crimes ever committed in Davies County. Justice demands and the Commonwealth will ask and expect a verdict of the death penalty by hanging. The defence did not offer much, and then a judge then offered his comments, before four and a half minutes of deliberation by the jury occurred, and Rainey Beffier was sentenced to death by hanging. There was an appeal, but this was rejected, and the death sentence was pushed ahead with. The sheriff at the time who would oversee the execution was a woman, the wife of a previous sheriff who had recently died unexpectedly. Arthur L. Hash, a former police officer, offered his services to the sheriff to perform the execution, and she then accepted the offer, and Hash then arrived at the execution site, drunk and wearing a white suit and a white Panama hat. But no one knew he was the one who would pull the trigger and execute Beffier. On the 6th of August, the government signed the execution warrant, and arranged it for the 14th of August 1936. He had his last meal, and the following morning he was transferred for his execution. A professional hangman had visited him, to tell him to stand on the X which was marked, and then at 5.21am he left Davies County Jail, and he walked flanked by two deputies onto the scaffold. Within two minutes he was at the foot of the scaffold, and he removed his shoes and put on a new pair of socks. He went up the steps of the gallows and stood on a large X which was marked. He had previously made his confession, and then the noose was placed around his neck. It was adjusted, and then Hash was told to pull the trigger, but he was too drunk and he did not. Then the executioner then screamed at Hash to do it, and then a deputy released the trigger, which opened the trap door, and Rainy Beffy's drop of eight feet snapped his neck instantly. In front of a crowd of around 20,000, Rainy Beffy was executed, 
and there were many complaints afterwards that the drunk man should not have been allowed anywhere near the execution. The executioner Hannah would later say that in his 70 hangings he oversaw that this was the worst display he had ever seen. There was a significant degree of embarrassment and a media circus around it, and then this would be the final execution performed in public in America. Many more executions occurred behind closed doors, and they still do this today, but Rainy Beffy's name is cemented in history as the final man to be executed in front of a huge crowd in the United States. At the age of just 26 he was killed, but his crime was one which was particularly heinous. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.